The biggest myth is that VR is ready now for adoption. Um, it's obviously one of the most um, um, incredible technologies that I've seen and, and mainly for the potential. But uh, uh, the potential that it has, which is, which is infinite. I, I don't see any, we have a lot of issues, but um, we're pretty good at solving them, but it's gonna take some time. Um, that's the biggest, like the biggest myth of people that are expecting, and I think that that comes down to the fact that our imagination goes uh, faster than our execution, <laughs> in general, in, especially in technology. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of variables I think here. Uh, one of them, which says a lot about the technology, is that. Um, as, as I was saying, the potential is infinite. You don't need a lot of imagination to, th to imagine how this will work if there weren't a lot of technology, like problems in miniaturization, in price, in, in ergonomics, in artificial intelligence. So, but the thing is, it's really easy to imagine that. And for a lot of people, it's very tempting to expect that. Not just imagine it, but expect it. And that's the dangerous part. It's like we need to go steadily and, and slowly because that's how technology advances. Um, but it's still very close. So you have those two things and you have to um, um, kind of like balance your expectations. In cases like Google Glass, um, I think it is one of a, one approach to, to VR that wasn't for different variables, it wasn't ready or it wasn't the right approach. To be honest, as, as I think that that's going to be that's going to be a constant. There's going to be an iteration, a constant iteration of the headsets. I don't, I don't see these headsets as we see them now, uh, still going on in the next uh, ten years. It's like they they will come in a different. I, I don't even know how. I don't because whatever I think is going to be, <laughs> the end is going to be changed. But um, you're going to have like is the the easy. Is they're going to look like regular glasses to like they're going to be contact lenses they're going to be like plugged in the brain it's going to be a pill that you take or like imagination is free and, and i think it's great in that sense but we'll have to see because there's a lot of different technologies involved in vr and and there's a lot of different demands from people so people might get a, a, a great technology like google glass and not care about it, which is the other part. It's like people need to feel that they can, that technology helps them to do something. And it's the other part of, it's not just technology that needs to progress, it's the content. It's like why, it's like, yeah, this technology is incredible, but why do I care about it? Why, how is that gonna help me in the daily life? How am I gonna, what am I gonna get from it? And that's the content part of it that needs to go along with the technology. It's difficult to say because humans, we, we, we never we, we never do things in order. We're gonna do them as soon as we can. And I think they, they'll end up uh, together somehow. So there's gonna be discoveries in the sound area, there's gonna be discoveries in the haptics, in the miniaturization, in AI. And those have different timings. And the only way we can go ahead is to go ahead. And, and, and make it as, as there's like a, a famous uh, gif in the VR industry which is an old cartoon of a dog in front of a train putting the rails as the train goes. That's how I think it's gonna, it's gonna be. The, the most important thing of VR, which is I think is, is the, in, in, in this sense, is the fact that there's no way back. Uh, it might be slower at some point, it might be uh, waiting for something, someone to make it cheaper, smaller, but I don't think, in, if, you, if you follow the way humans have been interacting with technology, from uh, cards with, with uh, perforated cards to one dimension, one dimensional screens, then two dimensional screens in which we have to create the mouse. Um, there's a clear progression in that, which is three-dimensional and using our body as, as the pointer or whatever. 
Um, so there's, I, I don't see a way back. It's like it's, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take a different shape, but we are gonna interact with technology without friction. And that is the, 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 how we're going to get to that part. It might not even be called VR or AR or extended reality, mixed reality, um, real reality. There's like a lot of these words that I'm, I'm really sure that in two years they're going to mean nothing because it's exactly the same thing. Um, to reduce friction in the way we interact with technology. We are uh, um, like at a studio called Future Lighthouse, and we're focused mainly on, on narrative, on, on storytelling, or on trying to figure out what's the language of this. If, and it, it takes a lot from, from film, which is the most obvious. Well, the most obvious is video games. So video games, film, it takes a lot from, from plays, from theater. Um, there's a lot of language of stage in which you're aware of space, you're aware of other people, which doesn't happen in other medium. So uh, it's the, the way that we are putting together the things that some works and not, some, some don't, and uh, making mistakes and learning from them, because it's, 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 it's a completely new way to interact with something. So um, it's by looking for those skills in other, in other disciplines. Our aim at this stage, since we can uh, push technology further, we are, we're not in that position, is to um, hopefully create content that people find memorable, or that at least they 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 uh, they went through some journey that when they take off the headset uh, makes them feel that this is worth it was worth all the friction, all the hassle of putting together a wired headset. Um, and sometimes the computer doesn't work. Sometimes it's it, it, you see weird things and artifacts. Something that's worth all that hustle is actually like what we wish. Like it, there was more of that. We've been working for two years in in producing our own content, and and now. Uh, working with uh, like film studios and, and with Oculus and different partners to create new content that we're going to start um, production soon. And the idea is to um, learn from the mistakes uh, that, that we made, which were a lot. Uh, uh, have like developed the intuition because still not there. No, I, I don't think that many people had the authority to say they know um, a lot about VR. It's the thing is we're getting our intuition better, and we're still at, at that stage. As anticipating certain things is not the same as in film. It works in a different way. Some things work, some things don't. Uh, but again, the, the better we get, the, our intuition gets, the more potential we see and the more uh, opportunities we see for content that, it's, that is completely new and that's, it hasn't been done yet. Our vision for the near future, well near, <laughs> our vision for the future, I don't know how long, is to have, to be able to create a reactive world, reactive to you and the way that you're feeling. Um, this is gonna take a lot of time, a lot of technologies like biometrics, like haptics, like uh, and as you say, artificial intelligence. The idea is that a, a creator is able to create a world that uh, they don't even know how it's gonna behave. When you try your experience, you don't, you can anticipate it, and you are the creator. That would be our, our final aim. So to be able to have a world that has its own rules and, and to see what happens, which is going to clash a bit like philosophically with what are we actually doing in VR when we create a world with rules and, and, and that goes on its own. Um, it's a really interesting. <laughs> I think I think that was that, that was the, the problem in the beginning. I think there's a lot of people who invested in this technology without the knowledge or without knowing 
what is it for real? This is bigger. This is now, and it's going to be bigger than anyone can imagine. But not in the way that they wanted, not with the short side approach that they were having, not magically. Uh, which means that people need to have a long term vision on this. As I said, there's no way back. But you need patience and obviously resources to survive or to to be able to monetize, which is going to happen in, 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 in the short, medium term. So you just need to understand the technology of better, understand the, the massive challenge that we have in front of us, but also the fact that there's no way back. So that's that's a challenge for a lot of a lot of in investors and in general everyone.